This is going to be a fantastic sister to sister. Today, we're going to talk about how do you deal with a fragile friend. You mm, are not, not fragile. fragile. And how much do you financially support your adult children? Hmm. Don't ask, mm -mm. but stay tuned mm -hmm. to find out what the sisters think. Sister to sister, we're so happy that you've joined us today. We are a group of women, five of us actually, and we answer the questions of the world from a biblical perspective, really from our hearts right to your home. And this question is a good one too, and it goes like this. How do you navigate a fragile ego, and I say in a friend really, that's not open to hearing you or your suggestions? Hmm. Hold on, wait a minute. My mother has another word for it. She didn't know I was going to do this. Come on. Yeah. 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 Let's go back to 19 blah, blah, blah. I won't say what it is. OK. And do you recall when I would cry when you would look at me funny? And you called me sensitive and creative. Thank Aww. you, Mommy. Aww. You can sit back up. boy, strong lawyer, I would cry when my mother would look at me funny. So I would have to say, I maybe not don't have the friend, but I was the one mm -hmm. that was fragile. And I want to say this to all my fragile friends first before I condemn it. <laughs> uh, Jesus said a bruised wheat reed, he would not break off a light right. flickering candle. He wouldn't blow out. That's right. But what does he do? He strengthens the root so Amen. the reed grows. He puts the oil in the lamp so the flame lights up. And that's what I have to say to you. Allow the Lord to focus on the facts in your life and not your feelings. My mother mm -hmm. was so kind to call me sensitive and creative when I would cry when she'd look at me funny. But I grew into a stronger woman because I learned through the adversity <coughs> to allow God to become the strength in my life and give oil to that <coughs> lamp to give me the strength that didn't come from myself. I love that. that Thank good. you. And Anna, we love you so much. She didn't know I was going to do that. Well, just, just a little side note. So Roxanne's mom comes to every single taping of Sister to Sister, and she is like our mom. And <laughs> I am not fragile today, but on days that I have been, Roxanne's mom has been there for me too. So Aww. we love you so much. Love you so much. Who else deals with the fragile? I don't necessarily person? look at a fragile ego though as being fragile. I think that's two different things. Somebody with a fragile ego, I look as more of somebody that's like, you know, haughty. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know. Like, okay. I read that differently. Okay. Like, you can't tell them they're a know-it-all. Like, I know everything. Like, you can't tell me anything. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading that I wrong. I think they're hiding underneath something if someone's no, like that. No, and I think, I think it could be either way. But my only point looking at that is don't gossip about them. Don't, oh, don't, good. don't good, Corey. go on the back end and talk about that person. I mean, don't gossip about anybody, but I just think that we can, we can make that situation worse when we go on the back end and gossip. That's good. That's wow. good. Wow. What about you, Flo? Do you fragile? Do you have fragile people? I, we're all surrounded by fragile people. Well, we're all fragile uh, yeah, at times, I, yeah. yeah, and so b b us as individuals, and then we are surrounded by fragile people as a whole. Um, I just, I really love what you just shared because it's a perspective that I really didn't yeah. think about when I yeah. um, looked at the question. So I, I really appreciate that. You know, when you think of a, someone with a fragile ego, um, it's a, it's a, per it has to deal. Ego has to deal with a person's self-esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. 
one of the things, I, I call it my uh, Corrigan. Corey, Corey always says, the flip side of that, let's look at the flip side of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm gonna do a Corey. The flip side of that okay. is, okay. Um, is one of the things that I know I have had to guard against is not allowing their self-esteem to affect me. Like I had to guard my heart, right. you know, because here you are somebody that I care about. You're in my Metron, my sphere of influence. I'm wanting to share with you. I'm wanting to help you and you are rejecting it. And or sometimes people are just mean and malicious and inconsiderate, mm -hmm. and how do I handle it? And so I have found that there have been times that, you know, sometimes I wanna retaliate back. Mm -hmm. I wanna, you know, do the things that the Word of God clearly tells us not to do, and that do not portray the fruit of the Spirit because I'm dealing with your self-esteem. And so then it actually affects my self-esteem yeah. issue. You know what I mean? So, um, I want to encourage us to, as I had a mother in the Lord, and you guys have heard me say this several times, go behind the veil. You know, mm. what's causing that right. person to like behave that yeah. way? Right. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. so why, and, and then be the good Samaritan, pour in the oil and the wine, that's but you got to seek God for how so that you don't become an enabler. That's right. Yes. That's right. Do you deal with the fragile people? Yes. And I, I wrote down like, Instead of fragile ego, dealing with people that are really insecure, deeply yes. insecure. And just a little warning, because you guys mm. have so eloquently uh, stated so much wisdom. But just another angle is that when you're that insecure person, when mm. you have that super high fragile ego, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. tends to repel people from you. Right. I get so, tired of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you, and people are, they're always, on eggshells when they're talking with you. They can't address anything. They can't sit down and speak the truth in love because it's so fragile. There's such insecurity. So people back off. So if people are backing off of you, I don't have any friends. I'm all alone. Just maybe look like God help me be secure in who I am in Christ so that when I'm around people, I portray security that I don't need you. I, you add to me, you know, so it, it kind of shifts the, the story a little bit. Yeah. That's right. And it, Okay, <laughs> go ahead. If I just wanted to jump in, because you made me remember something that, you know, many times we're broken in so many different areas. Yes. That's what has to do with, you know, fragile right. is, is easy to be broken, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And so the scripture says a wounded uh, spirit, you know, who yeah. can heal and God is near to the brokenhearted. Yes. So if yeah. we can just function as the body and every joint supplying yes. and yes. helping you to make that yes. connection, yes. Um, I think we would be a whole mm -hmm. lot farther along as opposed to just looking at mm -hmm. it from the perspective, oh, you have a fragile ego, mm -hmm. ego. what a joke you right. are. Right, right, right. 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 You know? But I'm gonna move to the next question because yeah. as mm -hmm. you were talking, I remember mm -hmm. in the promo, I know you don't agree with me on this financial <laughs> thing. So I'm gonna ask you first, um, how much should you financially help your adult child who your child is in college? So you have yes. to help her. Yes. But what are you going to do? No, you don't have no, to help her. To. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, right, so go, yeah, go, being go. right in the middle, I'm a brand new young adult mom. And guess what? We messed up last year. <laughs> and we did too much. And then we thought, oh my gosh, we have to stop what we're doing mm -hmm. because there's something about the struggle that makes you stronger. There's mm -hmm. something about starting at the bottom and working your way up and really Absolutely. put sweat and blood and tears and being highly responsible instead of highly That's dependent good, and you owe me because I was born. Yes. Oh boy. The okay. answer, the answer to this question is how much did you help your adult child? First of all, adult and child do not belong together. Those two <laughs> words are oxymorons. Okay. You should help your adult child financially zero dollars. <laughs> Right, That's I'm, the no answer to the little. question. No, no I'm not even doing that little. I have a 17-year-old oh son. That is not little. My 17-year-old son <laughs> pays his own car insurance, <laughs> and next year when he turns 18, he will start to pay his own phone. Mm -hmm. He will pay for it. We are, we are not going to send a kid to college mm -hmm. that has never paid for anything on his own. You, you do it in levels so that it's mm -hmm. not, when well, you become good. an adult, yeah. Yeah. that it's not suddenly 
recently, oh my gosh, I've never paid a bill before in my life. Mm -hmm. This is how you parent children. You do levels of things so that things aren't a slap in the face. <laughs> so that when you become an adult, that you've experienced things in levels and that you understand that there's a real world and that it's coming at you like a freight train. So that you understand there's bills and it's a reality. So no, unless your child is, you know, mentally or physically incapable of, you know, taking care of themselves, when they become adults, no, they're no, not I'm longer on your insurance. Eyes, but that's all right. No, okay, go yes. ahead. I'm, go ahead. I'm kind of rolling my eyes, but I agree with her stewardship. Mm -hmm. yeah, there yeah. is a balance. I think right, Flo balance. used the word mm -hmm. enabler mm -hmm. in the other question. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be careful not to enable, but we have to bring a hand up. Every child, I had five children, they're all different. Uh, you know, they, some were very responsible. Yes, mom, do pay the bill pay for insurance, do those things, wash on their clothes, do all that kind of stuff. Others need more nurturing. And sometimes you good. have to allow them, as Amy said, to fall, but help them come back mm -hmm. up right. and learn stewardship by the things they've suffered. Mm -hmm. So I think there's always a balance, in, as Flo says, in everything we mm -hmm. say, there's usually a balance. And at, when you actually go through it, sometimes it's a good thing because stewardship is the key. Mm -hmm. Flo, help me out. <laughs> What do you want me to help I don't you know. with? I'm not sure. She wants some money. Yeah, she, she wants, wants some money. money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just really feel that they all answered it in the answer. I think they covered every area. I do think that we have to teach a tra train a child up in the way that they should go and I think Corey gave a great example of that I think that we need to be balanced you know and I think we need to be transparent and so I think they there's nothing to add to that except pay attention. Well, can you be all of our moms since you like to help? Your <laughs> so you, you know, the, in the promo when we said this, and I said with honesty, don't ask. And so again, I say, yeah. don't ask. <laughs> it's all right because we're all different. And I learned the spirit of generosity mm -hmm. from my parents and my in-laws. And to my children, we have passed on the unbelievable spirit of generosity. So once again, don't ask. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. You've joined us here on Sister to Sister, and we have a studio audience today, and they're just loving our answers. We hope that you are loving us, too, and I hope you love this question. I do. Here's what it is. Science says, whoever science is, I'm not sure who wrote this one, <laughs> couples that make fun of each other have better relationships. Hmm. Do you agree? I don't know, Corey. And I want to remind you that your mother-in-law <laughs> is in the audience. Oh, Just her? say it. I love my mother-in-law. And I love my husband. I and know. there's nothing I would say any differently that she's in the audience than that she's not in the audience. That. Yeah, <laughs> <I know that. laughs> um, but science says a lot of things that I don't agree with. I know so, that. <laughs> I mean, I don't really care what science says because... They said, poor little Pluto's not a planet anymore. <laughs> and, you know, they talk a lot about climate change and evolution. So, you know what, science can say whatever the heck it wants. Um, and I'm not going to necessarily take it for face value. So this one is a little strange to me, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, I think it's important to be able to laugh with your spouse and to be able to laugh with each other and at each other and at your own mistakes and to have inside jokes with each other, but that's in privacy. But to make fun of each other with other people, I think is a big no-no, honestly. That is, that's the love of your life. That's your best friend. That's somebody that you should honor and respect and, you know, talk about positively to other people, not make fun of. 
I would be hurt, really hurt. My husband does not do that, and I don't do that to him. I would be really hurt if he spoke of me that way, and, if, and I would not do that to him. I would not disrespect him in that way. So I completely disagree with this. Yep, yep. Yeah, I'm all a big no for putting each other down and thinking that that's fun. But teasing, yes. yes. Having fun, yes. The, the number one thing I loved about my husband before I married him was he was so much fun. Like crazy, random life of the party. But you know what? You kind of have to keep that through the years because it yeah. gets tough and it gets hard. It gets sad. It gets... It gets, you know, you, you can get angry and cold and hard-hearted. So there is an element of like, God, help me to keep it fiery. Help me to keep it fun. Help me to laugh when I don't really want to laugh at that. And I'm so busy and I have so much going on and he wants to joke around. But like, oh yeah, that's why I married yes, him amen. because he was random and fun and cool and creative and and, and that's, so like, don't forget the fun part of marriage and the, the laughing together. Right, but it's it, the part that says that they make fun of each, each other, other is yeah. what Corey is alluding to, and I don't mm -hmm. like teasing is different than making fun. Yeah. I think well because Pastor Buck, who's your husband, will mm -hmm. tease you about your shoes mm -hmm. and how you love shoes, and yeah. it's funny. Yeah. George will tease me that I really can't cook, yeah. and that's funny. <laughs> yeah, right. But making fun yes. of something that I cooked that's terrible, I don't think I would laugh. <laughs> well, right. Yeah. Well, you know, my husband and I, I guess as you get older, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, but good, good. I love the fact that you can take it and laugh at yourself. Yeah, me too. Right? Okay. Uh, you know, laughing at yourself, like when my husband said, what, when he says, oh, I'm an uninspired chef, you know, because, <laughs> you know, we're clumsy. I do. We're clumsy on that. <laughs> we're, we're over it. Yeah, baby, you it. cook all you want in the kitchen. I'm uninspired. That's great. Yeah. I am going to make one thing for Thanksgiving, though. I, I like it because it relieves pressure before yeah. we actually really get into it. So it's maybe it's not making fun, but you know, I, we call him the nerd or the geek or the, you know, and, and so we kind of make fun about our attributes in a way that's loving. And my kids do it to me too. Okay. Oh no, we're eating on the carpet. Mom's going to be after us with the rag and kicking us out of the family okay, room. Okay. So, they make fun and then we all laugh. So okay, if we, that's good. Because remember I talked about the fragile ego. Mm -hmm. So the person that was fragile has to start laughing at herself. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. So that's good. I do, we do kind of make that happy blend now. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to move on to the next question though because I don't want to not get to it. It's so good. It's so darn good. And it goes like this. How do you get your me needs met when you're not sure the difference between what you want and what you need. And I'm gonna to go to you, Flo, because you have Why? the wisdom. Because you have, <laughs> Why? You have a lot of wisdom. Why? <laughs> wisdom of Flo. So how do you know the difference between wants and needs? I don't think you always know the difference, to be quite honest okay. with you. Okay. Um, I think, you know, I can give you a textbook answer, which is, you know, a need is something that is essential, a desire is a want. However, um, I believe that desire is a part of God's DNA that is in us. You know, God gives me the desires of my heart. So he puts that desire in me to be like him and to fulfill purpose and destiny. He would above all things that I would prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. So there has to be a desire in me to begin to do that, to begin to prosper, to begin to move uh, towards God. Um, when I look at a question like this, uh, how do you get your needs met when you are not sure of the difference between the two? I think that you're going to be halt between two opinions and you're probably not going to get them met. An unstable mind, you know, man is unstable in all his That's ways. Right. So when I don't know the difference, I don't think that the I can really have the expectation to have it met because right, I'm just right. not clear. But when I get clarity that this mm -hmm. is God's will and God's purpose, mm -hmm. then my faith kicks in yes. and I can stand my ground and demand the heavens to respond yes, to yes. my earthly That's cry. That's a great answer. That is wisdom of flow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Amy, what do you think? Well, I think about, you know, needs and wants and I just mm -hmm. think about like my children. I need this now. It's like, <laughs> um, it's a pair of shoes. And let's see, you have like a lot of shoes. And I wouldn't say that's a great need in your life. You might want that, but 
you know, transfer to a, a, an adult that's kind of acting babyish. I need this. And, and to me, the needs versus wants are kind of like surface kind of uh, material yeah. possession, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we're talking about joy and peace. And I, I mean, right. that's, that's given to you according to the promises of God. But I mean, the, the scripture that my God shall supply all of my needs according to right. his riches and glory right. in that's Christ right. Jesus. And I know very few people that are lacking or needing anything like in in america man we've got roof mm -hmm. over our head we've got food on our table most people we have we have government assistance we have church assistance we have a lot of 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 needs met here and so the wants that's just extra we don't we don't serve wants we don't like lust for wants all the time that's just extra to enjoy oh, i like that i like well, that a real great way to figure out the difference between needs and wants is to go and serve elsewhere mm -hmm. yeah. where right. there are people that don't that's have good. their that's needs great. being that's met. Great. Right. Go to another country where mm -hmm. they don't have their everyday needs, where there is hunger, yeah. where they don't have roofs over their head. Yeah. Where And right. you know what? It's in America too. Yeah. Go downtown Pittsburgh mm -hmm. under homeless. the bridges yeah, where the good. homeless are. Yes. Go and serve and minister there. And then you'll real quickly mm -hmm see the difference yeah. between your needs right. and your right. wants. Right. What do you have, Roxy? I just have Jesus' own words, as my sister said. He said, don't worry about anything. Yes. Right. Whether it's a need or a want or a desire, he said, seek God's kingdom first. Mm -hmm. He's supplied our food. He's yes. supplied our shelter. If he doesn't, he still says in Matthew 6, don't worry about it. Seek my kingdom first. Right. And, and everything else that you need will be added. So I don't even think we should worry or sometimes even pray about it. He is concerned. He fed the 5,000. He, he is concerned about our food, our shelter, and so on. But we don't need to be. Yes, yes. And I do yes. think God likes to gift us with little joys and, and little hidden desires of your heart. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. mean, I, I was saving up my money for this, you know, this belt actually. And I was saving, saving, saving. And do you know that that thing showed up on the door by a friend that was like a random friend across the city sent that exact same belt I was saving for wow. right to my doorstep. That is there is so God. nobody that would have known or had any clue except that for is the so Lord. God. And just the last word I have is that when you're content, that mm. is a Amen. compliment. Yes. Amen. It's a compliment to our Father. Yes. He is so pleased when you're content with what He has so freely yes. given to us. And we're going to be right back because we're going to wrap this thing up. Stay there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Answering a lot of questions, I would love to hear your answer. How do you financially help your adult children, I would seriously love to know. And, you know, what about a fragile ego? There are so many questions and, and things in life, but I love that we end sister to sister with a scripture. And hope, hopefully it kind of brings us back to the basic that we love God's word and God's word changes us, challenges us, and helps us always. This scripture is out of the Psalm chapter six, and it says this, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication and the Lord receives my prayer. Are you struggling with anything? Are you struggling with kids? Are you struggling in marriage? Are you struggling with career or purpose or life or self-esteem or value? The Lord will hear your cry. The Lord will answer the cries of your heart. You are not alone. He is alive. He is well. He is listening. His ear is actually tuned in to hear your cry. Cry out to him today. I just love that, what Amy said. And I love this too. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman sharpen the other. You see, family, these girls make me a much better Kathy. See you next time. We are sister to sister. <laughs>